The Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, is in Western Australia this week and he's being urged to focus on crime and social problems in a number of regional towns. The Nationals leader, David Littleproud, is in Carnarvon, where the problems are perhaps a little more acute. He joins me live now. Thanks so much for your time. What have you seen while you were there? I understand there was some more uh, incidents overnight. Yeah, look, uh, we'd landed within an hour of, and basically before we even finished dinner, uh, there were about four or six businesses that were broken into. Uh, one of them, our local National Party member here, Mem Beard's office. Uh, basically, we met uh, Emma, who runs the local vet, veterinary clinic here. Uh, she's been broken into 15 times over the last 12 months. Uh, but when you sit here and you talk and you walk the streets at night with Indigenous leaders and elders who are trying to make a difference, uh, they are frustrated. They are frustrated that despite their calls to ask the Prime Minister to come to Carnarvon, like he did Alice Springs, or even Linda Burney for that matter, to come and to understand the bespoke uh, needs of this community and what's required. Because what's required here will be different to Alice Springs. And this is where a cookie cut approach from Canberra doesn't work. Bigger bureaucracy doesn't work, better bureaucracy works. And that's what we're hearing on the ground from those, particularly those Indigenous men and women who are prepared to volunteer to walk the streets and to get children home. But ultimately, uh, they're out in the streets because there's a discourse at home. In fact, I think we've lost one generation and we particularly could lose a second generation of Indigenous people here in, in Western Australia and across the country if we don't take drastic action. And that doesn't mean that we have to have a Canberra approach. It has, means we have a local approach. Uh, that's the only way to do it. Uh, and, you know, these kids uh, have no direction, sadly, at home and they're hiding from home and they're hungry. Um, mm. What I heard last night was from those volunteers or that, that were walking the streets trying to get them home was trying to give them some, some comfort with food and then trying to give them a safe place. And that, that's, you know, you've got to take your hat off to those that are courageous enough to do that. But there are real mm. problems that need the decision makers on the ground, not, not actually send people to Canberra. Canberra needs to be here. This needs to be a better bureaucracy, not a bigger bureaucracy. These uh, problems that we see in Carnarvon and other places like we've focused on in Alice Springs, they haven't happened overnight. Uh, there has been a, a long lead up time uh, to what we're seeing now. You said the Prime Minister needs to go to Carnarvon. What would that actually achieve though? Well, I don't think it's just flying in and flying out. Uh, you know, it's about actually sitting here and listening to, to the entire community, but particularly those, those uh, Indigenous leaders on the ground that are trying to make a difference. Uh, it's important that you actually understand uh, the challenges that are here. And as I heard from uh, a young man that was volunteering his time on the night, uh, last night on the streets, uh, that there are tailored solutions for this community that needs to be implemented. And it, and it won't work in Geraldton, but it will work here. Uh, and this is where you need political leadership to actually take hold of the bureaucracy and say, this is what you are going to do. You are going to leave Canberra and you're not coming back until you have the tailored solutions and until you work with the state government to make sure that we have the programs in place to, to fix this dysfunction. That's the practical reality. We don't need another layer of bureaucracy. We just need a better layer of bureaucracy than we've got now. OK, you say the solutions in Carnarvon will be different to those that are required in Alice Springs, for example. How are they different? How is Carnarvon unique in your view? Well, again, you have to have community buying. And this is the thing, is if you want programs to work, you actually have to have the community to help co-design them and then actually buy into them. If you actually create them from, from Canberra, from a bureaucrat in Canberra, uh, the, on, a, on a cookie cutter approach across the nation, it won't work. You need community leaders to have ownership of this. And I've seen this in my own electorate, where we've had real leadership from the local council in Kunnamulla, along with the Indigenous groups there, that actually created their own bespoke model that would help some of the challenges they had, which was around uh, young young mothers being able to bring their children through and, and mm. make sure that they were well nourished and get them all the way through to school. Uh, here, uh, there is even uh, more acute issues around getting them off the streets at night and being able to make sure that they have a safe place at home. In fact, the local council designed an action plan here. They designed an action plan that was partly uh, part of it was about trialling the cashless debit card because they could see the hunger in these kids at night. And what they were saying is they wanted to make sure that some of the social security, Australian taxpayers' money, was being petitioned off for bread and butter so that these kids could get a feed three times a day. Uh, these, are the, these are the solutions that Carnarvon are coming up for. And it shouldn't be a bureaucrat telling them what to do. It should be the community, but also not just Indigenous voices. But what about Emma's voice? Emma's 
a young vet who just has had her business for over 12 months and been broken into 15 mm. times. Where's her voice in this? Where's her, her opportunity to, to express her concerns about the community that she loves? This is a proud community. It has a big future ahead of it, but it needs to be given the tools, not the tools from Canberra, but the tools created right here in Carnarvon. You're all about community-led uh, solutions here, in, particularly in the Indigenous community. I'm not saying this is an Indigenous uh, problem, but I want to bring it back to The Voice now because isn't that what The Voice is all about, trying to achieve that through all of the things that affect Indigenous people? Well, there is there is no way that the voice will actually help the, the people of Carnarvon here and the Indigenous people in, in, in Carnarvon. There's over a Why thousand. Not? Because that's Indi what's at the there heart are, of this, isn't well, it? It's, it's, getting, it's getting Indigenous so, leaders so the person, and Well, groups. let me tell you, Laura, the, pers yeah. the person that will... The person that will represent Carnarvon will probably not even live in Carnarvon. They will live probably in Geraldton that? or somewhere else. These, these are, because, well, because there are hundred, because we do know the detail. There's going to be over 20, 20 regions. Uh, and when you are talking outside capital cities, where most of the most of the commentariat live, you are talking about hundreds of thousands of square kilometres with hundreds of different communities. So this this model that w we have lived through before was one that we have experienced and failed, and we live with the consequences. We live with those consequences because you cannot get someone that would have to represent hundreds of thousands of square kilometres and actually be able to give an articulate and acute uh, idea of what is needed here. There are over a thousand uh, bodies across, uh, across our governments, both federal and state, that are giving uh, information back to government about how they should deliver programs. This is simply about our system of government working better and simply saying to the bureaucracy, you are not, you are not to make the decisions from Canberra. You are to get out of Canberra and you are to sit around the campfires, you are to sit around the town halls, you are to walk the streets like I did last night and you are to understand what the model is in Carnarvon that will be different in Kunnamulla, that mm. will be different in Wilcannia. We don't need another layer of bureaucracy, you just need better bureaucracy and that's what we can create. If the ministers of all political persuasions actually got their bureaucracy working properly. Another layer of bureaucracy is just going to be another one on top of the thousand that we've already got now. Thousands of groups giving information and giving advice to the government. We don't need another one. We just need our bureaucracy to work better. And if when you talk to the yes case, those designers, that's exactly their frustration. Their frustration that they expressed to me was that we don't have a bureaucracy that's working the way it should be. Uh, and we have, we have, in all generosity, tried to fix this, but now is time to actually flip this on its ear, not put another layer of bureaucracy in. OK, David Littleproud live there from Carnarvon, calling on Anthony Albanese to make that same visit. Thanks so much. We'll check in soon.